Okay, so this is a short presentation just explaining what the Bill of Rights is and the hand motions to help you keep the first 10 Bill of Rights straight in your mind so that you can remember them. So, uh, today we talked about the Bill of Rights. There are two key parts to the explanation as to what this was and why it was important. The Bill of Rights defined liberties and it placed restraints on government. Those were the two main things it accomplished. That's what's mentioned in your textbook, so that's going to help you the most on any regular credit questions related to the Bill of Rights. Key word there in defined liberties. The Bill of Rights does not hand out, liber hand out liberties to people like it's handing out money or candy or anything else. The government does not give rights to people. The Bill of Rights was merely recognizing that the government doesn't have the right to control people in certain ways. It's recognizing that people already had these rights to start out with, and it's just the government promising not to take away those rights. Now, these two key things are part of the regular credit definition for this. However, we also learned some hand motions to help us keep the first 10 amendments straight. So maybe you could use these to earn just a little bit of extra credit. So, in order to keep the Bill of Rights straight, here are some hand motions. First one, raps. You gotta you got have your finger over your mouth to shush someone, but no, you have freedom of speech. So, first one, freedom of speech. Well, actually, there's five. Raps, raps. R is religion, A is freedom of assembly, P is freedom of the press, the other P is freedom to petition the government, and S is for speech. First Amendment, shh, raps, raps, those five freedoms. Second one, um, one, two, Second Amendment. You don't actually, you're not supposed to point anyone. That'll get yourself and me in trouble. But this is help you, to help you remember, you have the right to bear arms. That's what the Second Amendment is about. Third Amendment is about quartering soldiers. You hold up three fingers and say, whoa, three is a crowd because you don't want to crowd, crowd your home. The Third Amendment uh, forbids the government to force you to house soldiers in your home. Not a huge deal nowadays, but it was a big deal back during the American Revolution. Third deal, three's a crowd, the government can't force you to house soldiers. Four, well, fourth, what is the football hand motion for fourth down? It's a fist like this. So fourth, you go knock, knock, it's the police, but they can't enter without a warrant. So you have the right against illegal searches and seizures. A police need a warrant in order to search your house. So it's fourth, knock, knock, it's the police, but they can't enter without a warrant. That's how you remember the Fourth Amendment. Fifth Amendment, you go one, two, three, four, five, all five fingers, and you cover your mouth because you have the right to remain silent. You have the right to not incriminate yourself in front of a court. Police cannot force you to testify against yourself, so you have the right to remain silent. That's what the Fifth Amendment is about. Sixth one, you need to have six fingers up for this. One, two, three, four, five, six. You have the right to a speedy trial. That's what the Sixth Amendment is. You have the right to a speedy trial. Now, seventh and eighth, I, I don't have a good hand motion for this. I'm really sorry. You're just going to have to use the shape of the seven and the shape of the eight to help you remember what those amendments are about. Seventh Amendment, if you were to turn the seven in a weird way, it would kind of look like a J for jury. I'm, I'm sorry, that is honestly the best I could come up with in the time that I had. Seven, you have the right to a trial by jury. Sorry, that's the best I could come up with. And number eight, uh, no cruel or unusual punishment. Uh, what does a set of handcuffs look like? The number eight. I'm really sorry I couldn't come up any, with any hand motions for this one, but at least seven looks like a J and an eight looks like a handcuffs. Seventh Amendment, you have the right to a trial by jury. Eighth Amendment, you have the right to not, be, to not suffer cruel or unusual punishment. Uh, back to the hand motions. Uh, nine, you kind of you kind of have to have one of your fingers missing. The thing is, the Ninth Amendment is about rights are reserved to the people. Even though a certain right might not be listed in this list of ten, it is assumed that people have rights that aren't listed. So uh, I, I don't know if there are any 
rights about stepladders in the Constitution or in the amendment, or, and I don't think of either the United States or Georgia has any rules against owning stepladders in your home, despite how dangerous they could be. You have, according to the Ninth Amendment, the constitutional right to own stepladders, even though it's not listed. Even though it isn't seen in the list, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You have rights, even if they're not listed in this list. And last one, the Tenth Amendment, all government powers, not rights, states don't, well, whether or not states have rights is a very complicated issue, and that's like a whole lot of American history, but we don't have time for that. Government powers that aren't given to the federal government in the Constitution are supposed to be reserved to the states. So, uh, 10, uh, anyone who's worked with kindergartners knows kindergartners have gimme hands. Kindergartners have gimme hands. So, uh, for the first couple of generations after the Constitution, you have this debate between the federal government and the state government. Who has most rights? Who should have the most rights? States say the states, the federal government says it's the federal government. So states want their rights. So they're gonna have, the states are gonna have gimme hands. The states want their rights. Now this is going to be settled. Um, now obviously there needs to be a balance. I'm not 100% I'm not state rights. I'm not 100% uh, federal government power. There's a balance to be had. Um, it's worth noting in history, however, ever since the 14th Amendment got passed after the Civil War, uh, the federal government has always had more power. But up until then, the states are going to want their rights. So that's how you keep the first 10 amendments straight. One, freedom of speech, but it's also raps. Freedom of religion, freedom of assembly, freedom of press, uh, freedom of petition, and freedom of speech. Second, one, two, right to bear arms. Three, three's a crowd. Uh, right to not have to quarter troops in your house. Four, uh, freedom against unlawful search and seizure. Police can't enter without a warrant. Fifth, you have the right to remain silent. Six, you have the right, six, you have the right to a speedy trial. Seven, kind of looks like a J for trial by jury. Eight, kind of looks like handcuffs for no cruel and unusual punishment. Nine, uh, even if a right isn't listed, even if you don't see it, even if it's not on the list, you still have that right. And 10, states want their rights, so for the first two generations, states are going to have some gimme hands because states want their rights. That's the best I could come up with, but hopefully that'll help you keep the first 10 amendments straight. There might be a little bit of extra credit related to those on the quiz.